My name's David Rooney. I'm the Science Museum's curator of transport. The ship and galleries opened at the Science Museum in 1963. It's the biggest gallery space in the museum, and it was stuffed full, over a thousand absolutely remarkable exhibits. Genuinely historic stuff. Every time I walked through, I found something I'd never seen before. After half a century, though, it was time to close the doors. It was time to make way for new exhibits. But we wanted some way to preserve the old shipping galleries, and I was really excited when we got the chance to have the whole display laser scanned. Two billion precisely measured points. And so now we can make a virtual model of the galleries. We can see them in an entirely new way. It's a unique permanent record of a unique historic exhibition. It lets us fly through the gallery. The marine engineering displays were my favourite, personally. Dozens of working model engines. This one dates back to the mid-19th century. And elsewhere, real engines as well, including some of the most important ever made. One of them's the world's first marine gas turbine. It's a Metropolitan Vickers engine derived from a wartime jet that got fitted to a motor gunboat in 1947. But that one was just the latest in a long line of historic engines on show. And then there's the model ships, hundreds of them. We knew that there's just something very special about them. People love to see them. This was a display of modern warships showing the advances in engineering up to the 1940s. The models are huge and they're just incredibly detailed. But the gallery wasn't just for the biggest ships, or the fastest, or the newest. It was also about showing small craft, the anonymous, handmade boats people used around the world just to get by. By making these models, we were trying to preserve a lost way of life. Some of our models tell heartbreaking stories. The Arandora Star was a cruise ship, but it got converted in the Second World War into a transport ship. In 1940, it got torpedoed. The circumstances were controversial. Hundreds of people were killed. One of our models is a very famous ship, Brunel's steamship, the Great Eastern. It was launched in 1858, and in its day, it was by far the biggest ship in the world. It finally got scrapped in the 1880s, but not before it laid the first successful transatlantic telegraph cable in 1866, an incredibly important episode. We're famous for our dioramas. 
This is a tiny three-dimensional room set made by the Science Museum's workshops in 1960. It shows Samuel Pepys and the rest of the Admiralty Board in 1677 deliberating over a model ship. So that tiny ship on the table, that's a model of a model. Amazing. One of our model ships, HMS Prince, was made in 1670, and it's one of the most important ship models in existence today. At the heart of the old shipping galleries was the figurehead from the 1824 ship HMS North Star. At its heart, this gallery was all about people. Time passes, technology changes. The shipping galleries showcased the old as well as the new. But things have got longer lives than we might imagine. After 50 years, it was time to close this chapter to make way for some new stories. But who'd have ever imagined in 1963 that we could make a virtual shipping gallery out of lasers and computers? I can't help thinking that if my predecessors had access to this sort of kit. They'd have done remarkable things with it. I can't wait to see how this technology develops. These guys have made a time machine. <laughs>